All right, so welcome back. Another video. This is actually hi, and again, eleven tens racing. Um, I'm actually going to attempt to try to do a decent video series of this next project, and I'm already off to a bad start. So I figured I'd try to shoot a little intro this morning. Apologize for the bad hair, but try to shoot a little intro this morning to give an idea of what we're going to be doing. So that way I've got it and I can try to keep taking some video footage and actually maybe do a decent job of showing what I'm about to do. So as you can see here, this is not the black JPS themed car that is out in the driveway waiting for its ECU to come back from Castle. This is my 95 M3, nickname Big Blue. And as you can see, stuff is apart in the engine bay. Again, not great with the filming thing, and I kind of just like to go crazy and get stuff apart. So, what we've got here is a S52. Um, the current, now previous setup of the car was S52. You can see here we were running one of the original this is one of the first 10 sets he made rapid racing development itb adapter itbs are up there stock air boxes in the trunk so we're running stock air box itbs s54 injectors 3.5 inch math uh the motor is built uh it's a 11 and a half to one compression forged pistons arp rod bolts main bolts head studs 276, 270 cams. Snuck down the side over there are some Active Bodyworks long tube headers. And all said and done, this setup made about 321 wheel and about 260 torque, redline 7200 RPM. Um, super fun combo, but I am now taking this to another level. Um, you can also see here where we've got a currently an upgraded. ATI dampener with a GDM engineering um, hub adapter. GDM engineering, very pretty billet aluminum oil filter relocation plate into this really nice set trab oil filter remote oil housing. So this is thermostatted so it can feed my oil cooler and then uses a nice twisty filter. And this is the guy that has caused this whole project to go out of the hole. So long story short, Travis of GDM has been bugging me, bugging me, bugging me that I need to put one of his cylinder heads on his car. Um, and after I bought that oil filter plate, I went, eh, let's do it. So long story short, we are going to be running a prototype head of his um, that is very, very ported. Um, the one example I can give of that is here's my new adapter plate. And if I flip these guys over here you can get a pretty good idea of how much more ported the new head's going to be on the intake side versus the old one along with that we've got 298 290 solid lifter cams from cat cams which means we are going to be converting the solid lifter courtesy of Eng alien engineering perry over there we're going to be doing a three and a half exhaust for maximum um, exhaust gas release. We are going to be going to, excuse the total mess over here, Link standalone ECU. We also have buried in here a Link flex fuel kit. Got some 60 pound injectors for, so E85 is the goal. We've got a new. 0.3 Kometic head gasket, so which should actually up the compression a bit. Um, we have two sets of exhaust options. Oh, they're buried. So, long story, we have got a set of... Man, man it's a mess in here. Apologize. Crash working on two big E36 projects has made it a bit of a disaster. So, long story short... We're going to be running two header options. Um, we're going to see which one's better. Uh, they are both S54 headers. Um, the one set is going to be a Bimmerworld. It's a Bimmerworld stepped long tube. 
can't even get that out without making a mess. Yeah, whatever. Um, so, and then the other option is this guy. This is an OBX. Yes, OBX. It's the knockoff American Racing 6 to 1 header. The port matching is identical to the American Racing, and for the purposes of dyno testing, we didn't get the full thing. We also have sitting over here a very pretty CSL style Jeff Racing carbon air box. But yeah, um, so we got header options, we've got bigger injectors, we've got way bigger cams, super ported head, um, a new front dampener, um, new ITB setup, the whole nine yards, and a massive exhaust system. The goal of that. Uh, see how much we can make um, one of the big goals with all of this is higher RPM so right now the car red lines at 7200 goal with this new setup is gonna be um, at least into the 83 8400s we're probably gonna push it higher gonna kind of really see what this engine can do the whole goal of this is to show that this US spec s52 that generally everyone thinks you can't get any power of it, out of it without a turbo or whatever and you can't. I've already proved that, but we're gonna push it to a new level. So that is the project. Um, so as you can see here, I've pulled the stock airbox off, I pulled the ITBs completely off, and I've yanked the radiator and expansion tank out because, yeah, just got a head start on that. And I yanked the wiring harness. So the next thing that I'm gonna to try to video is obviously, I've got to get this dampener off because we got a new one and that's going to be fun because um, this was a super pain to get on. But I got a puller kit that Terry recommended, so we're going to get a video of that. Um, obviously, we're going to get a video of getting this head off the car, um, clean the top of the block off. Motor's got like 6,000 miles on it, still has great compression, so I'm just going to pull the head, clean off the top of the block, um, and wait for Terry's head to get here, which should be in the next week or so. Um, also, too, is get these existing active autoworks headers off. Also, at least for the time being, on sad news, remove the AC lines because with my new race dampener, I can't retain AC. Um, yeah, but again, little intro, crash course of what this entails. Um, I've done a couple videos on the rest of this car, but. Um, if you want me to do one again later, I can because it, it is it is very well been worked over, I've kind of done everything to it. So, but anyways, uh, we're going to get into this build series. Um, yeah, so excited, been wanting to get this in and get going on this for probably a week or two now. Uh, and other goodies too, diff, wing, lots of fun things. So again, quick little intro or separate video as I'm at eight-ish minutes. Um, but yeah, uh, tune in, subscribe, like, all those fun things. Ask me questions. 11 Tents Racing on Instagram, Facebook. Um, hit me up on this or the other car. Obviously, the other car is the black JPS themed with an S54 in it. So very coincidence that we're going to have a car that is going to have a very built S52 and a moderately built out, lightly built S54. So let's see what they can do. Otherwise, thanks guys. And I'll either be back in the same video or a separate video. Have a good one. Okay, so we are going to try the hands-free, get a little working shot here. So what I started doing before I decided to pick this up here is the previous ATI dampener. So here's the dampener. Here's the custom made AC pulley and said bolts. Again, we're going to a higher performance dampener so we can get all the revs. But now the fun part is I gotta pull this sucker off. Oh, here you can also see my Turner underdrive pulley kit to work with this. But anyways, I gotta pull this thing off. Um, I need to start with, I got to pull the crank bolt because I got this fancy harmonic balancer puller kit to help get in that. But first, I got to pull that. Uh, 
say we're gonna need maybe this guy. Way too big. Winner, winner, 22 millimeter. Should really remember that one of these days. Now we're gonna grab this guy. Now the crank pulley on these are reverse thread. Now right now, parking brake is on and car is locked in gear, so this should not move. Now these are torqued to 220 foot-pounds. Oh, and this ain't gonna do squat. Dang it. Hold on, let's try. Now in theory, I remember which gear super I thought it was six see yeah my parking brake is not holding well at all Let's see if we can get a bit more torque on that and worst case scenario I'll have to get someone over here and Hold the brakes on. That actually had a pretty decent amount of torque. Let's try to get ourselves some more leverage. Don't mind the giant guy gank mess. One day I'll get this cleaned up. I don't need the whole pipe. I just need a bit more leverage. Take two. This is the state that I don't think that this is actually now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, it's not reverse thread. All right. That was a dumb move by me. Cool. Random fact do not reuse this bolt. This is a torque to yield stretch thread. And from experience, when you start pushing these motors, if you're reusing an old bolt, it will back out on you. All right. So, my understanding is the next thing is I gotta figure out, supposedly one of these guys adapts, but I think my bolt is this thickness okay so timestamp note to self uh, this is back on the harmonic balancer so figured out the pulley so what you do is you got this nice bit here and it's got a cone on the end you stick it in so that sits snugly in the end of the snout of the crankshaft then you've got these three bolts right here that we're gonna that we're that screw into the pulley and then essentially turn this guy what this is doing is this is pushing that bit into the crank snout and pulling on the dampener and then we're just gonna come over here not find what I'm looking for as usual. This will work. So we're just gonna 
set this guy like that and then we're going to just crank and crank and slowly but surely we are pulling the pulley off of the crank and because Travis at GDM deep down is an American he really designed this so that this beautiful American design balancer tool works fantastically in this European setting so thank you Travis for that because this is literally making this easy so well, the only downside I'm having right now is this is this is literally turning mm, there's got to be a way to if I stick one of these guys in the end here maybe I can stick yay that's gonna work I need to get a wrench on the end of that. That looked, I'm really thinking if I can get this thing started. That's really good too. But the biggest I have, they are the biggest I have. Okay, so yeah, I gotta go to the tool store and get a wrench. That's gonna be later. So I think at this point, it's gonna be, let's get this head unbolted. Um, I've done this a million times, people have watched it, but I think I'm gonna do my first attempt. See how a time-lapse works.
Okay, so oh, oh, let me pause this here. So we'll see how that came out. A um, couple things to add as note. Um, I'm sure some of you guys are like, why didn't you put the engine at top dead center? Well, essentially, when I put this back together, I'm going to be redoing everything. So uh, I was pulling cams out. It wasn't like I was pulling something and resetting time. I mean, I know I'm going to have to set timing from scratch again. I've done it multiple times before, so I wasn't too terribly worried about TDC+. Plus. I have no dampener. I have no markings. It's not going to be an easy thing to set right now. So again, best tip. Little side note, these badass little things, anyone that's done this, you pull these trays out, all the cam, all the um, caps just fall. And then putting these back in, it's a pain in the butt. Buddy Perry over at Alien Engineering made these sweet magnets. Hold the cam caps in. Especially when I have to put this thing back together and I have to do a solid lifter conversion, which is essentially each one of these caps has a little hydraulic thing in there. I have to break it down put shims in there, put it together, put the cams in, measure, lash, remove, repeat over and over again, these are going to be a lifesaver. So cams are out. As I've said before, these are Shrick 276, 270 cams. So they're not small boys. They're pretty much, you know, these are kind of the bigger size that most people run. Especially with full, you can retain full vanos, especially for me because I have uh, recessed pistons. But, yeah. Um, I was a little bummed you may have seen me. Uh, one of the bolts broke. Granted, I'm getting a new cylinder head, so I'm not overly worried about that after I kind of thought about it for a second. So, but yeah, um, at this point in time, I got two coolant lines I got to yank off that's going to leak coolant everywhere, which is really annoying. But, we're going to deal with that. Um, these guys come out, and then at that point, it's loosen and yank the head. So, we're close. I'm um, excited. This is probably one of my fastest cylinder heads. I've done this a lot, like too many times, so that's kind of why I just, I just go. I don't really need to look at a manual. I've probably done this job 55 times. So, but anywho's. Yeah, I figured I'd do a little pause, show you guys that. Plus, it looks like I am starting to get low on memory cards, so I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take a break now. I will probably jump back on time-lapse, or it'll just be a cut to these will be out, and I'll be ready to pull the head off. We shall see. All right, so... Get a bit of, in honors of 12 hours of Bathurst, we're going to join some beer that supposedly is Australian. All right. Slap some gloves back on. And do I have a game plan where I'm sticking these? This is always the trouble when you're taking apart stuff is where are you going to stash it all? Where's it all going to go? It can go on your buddy's box of, of brake rotors. Thanks, Tony. All right. So this is where, so normally you pull these things and in theory, all these cam caps are just going to fall out. But with this, yeah. Right. Love that is an ingenious, ingenious little add-on. Let's put that there. And now I'm just gonna go from the side because I can. Let's grab you. Boom, baby. Woo! Oils. This one's a little bit more oily. Alright. On the box with you. Ew. Clean that up in a second here. Oh man. That one leaked oil everywhere. Okay. So, at this point now, we got two coolant hoses. Full head studs. So you can see my snazzy. So these are Supertech valve springs. 
One thing I would say, if you're gonna go with the 276, 270 cams, you don't have to. I do know a guy that beats the bejesus out of his car and doesn't have an issue with this, but same token, if it were me, I would. Um, but, wow, that's a junky hose clamp. Some of the things that were built on this car I'm not entirely proud of. It's things you learn of as you progress through your automotive building life. This car has been rebuilt probably. This is probably the sixth time that I've redone this, this the, the, the theory behind this car. And I'm gonna pause that. It's probably loud. Now, the next question is gonna be is how much coolant's gonna fly out of this thing? Preferably not a lot. That would be swell. Yeah, you can see where to fit the S54 stock airbox, I had to unhook the heater valve and shove it here and protect the lines, cause, oh, all right, that's good. Okay, undo. Ah, see, this guy's gonna make a bit of a mess. Had a feeling of that. So what we're gonna try to do here is scale up this thing as far back as I can to try to catch it. Ain't no guarantees this is gonna work. As with most things I do, I'm not all that successful usually at, uh, yep. Now we see what we're dribbling, and hey, I was kind of close. Okay, I'm proud of myself on that. Uh, okay, so that's leaking. That's cool. I mean, it's going to leak a lot more. I mean, here, when I pop this thing all loose, this should be they're actually a 12. All right, so I think I'm gonna take a pause and probably, yeah, that's that. Flip this thing back over into time-lapse mode and we will see you on the flip side with hopefully this cylinder head off the car. Okay, and as you probably just saw in that brief time lapse there at the tail end, I popped the head loose. So this head does have ARP head studs, which is why I just did a traditional inner to outer pull. Interesting, it pulled some of the studs out, some of the bolts out. Yeah, whatever. I'm about to make another giant. Before I do that, I need somewhere to put this. This is gonna go right on that. It's right where this is gonna go because I need to pull the rest of the bolts out and fun things and God, this is, this is, this is, yes, yeah, this is making a giant fucking mess. Oh, excuse my language. I'm gonna have to beat myself there. Okay. Um, I knew I'm gonna have a bit of an issue here because when I installed this head gasket, I have a feeling it's sticking a bit to the head. Okay, 
here's what we're gonna do right now. We're actually gonna get, I should have my Allens over here. Yeah, we're just going to pull the rest of these studs out. Cause I think that's gonna make our lives a whole lot simpler. And then I gotta find a giant towel, cause again, <sighs> I made a big mess, which makes sense. You can try to drain this. I mean, what I, I should have done to all people, there's a bolt down there on the side of the block. I never pull it, but it's the coolant, well, it's literally the coolant port block, and it's designed to, you, you unbolt that, and you drain the block of all of its coolant. In theory, doing that would have prevented what just happened on my garage floor. But that's why we got towels. That's why we got kitty litter. It's all, all part of the experience. This is that one head bolt that fell down there. Oh. That's the other thing that I should probably do. Silly, silly man. It's all the things you do when you try to go quickly through something. You forget things. One of the things I've forgotten right here is I still got spark plugs sitting in this thing. I think I just got two more here, which is fine. I'm gonna go grab a, this one I think was literally basically there. Yeah, it was. Pull that right. Oh, fudgesicles. You go right there. Yink. Yink. Completely forgot that one. Yink. 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 Gimme. I'll take you. You're sitting right there. At these. So the nice thing about these, I want to keep an eye on them, they're reusable. It's truly one of the main reasons, actually it's probably the main reason I used them. And I was putting a bit more compression and I wanted to make sure I was all right. But the second part was simply, I knew if anything had gone south or I changed anything, cause you know, I changed things, hence I'm tearing this whole engine apart right now, is that, there we go. Okay, so that's all those out. Now what we're gonna do is just power through. This shouldn't take too long as I'm just sending them. First of all, problems when you can't get sockets off because your gloves are oily. Hey, plus the plugs look good. Plugs look pretty good and they're looking pretty even. Cool. That was nice. Okay. Next attempt. There's now. Yeah. There we go. Oh. Oh. All right. Whew. So, let's see what we're looking at here. Let's grab a few of these. 
Uh, got some nice carbon buildup. We're gonna get rid of all of that. We got a fudgical large amount of. Good news is the cylinders look phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, I got some. These are my nice JE Pistons. You know, six years, or sorry, 6,000 miles. You know, three years worth of use. I'm not, I'm not totally unsurprised of the carbon buildup that's on this. Ah, oh, I moved the garbage can over here. Crazy, silly me. Oh, all right, so, mission accomplished like I said the goal today was get this head off oh the good news is cylinders look freaking awesome still which considering again high compression all that fun stuff yeah this is I'm quite happy at how just carbon build up. We'll get these things cleaned up and looking freaking brand spanking new. I mean, you can still see hash marks still on the cylinder walls. Yeah, we're all intents and purposes. I'm happy with this. Not happy with the giant pile of coolant. Yeah, got the clean. So the this is a .80 Cometic head gasket and these Cometic head gaskets were pretty well known that they would leak at the timing cover. So what you do is you lay a little bit of good old RTV down at the timing cover, which is exactly what I did. So I'm gonna have to clean that all off. Whew. Okay. Okay. All right, well, I'm gonna probably stop you guys right now, let you guys go, but, oh yeah, we're about there. This one dowel stuck. It's probably gonna take, oh, yep, yeah, took the whole dowel with it. That's expected, yeah. That's a good looking block, that is a thicky boy. This is normally the kind of stuff you use for boost. For me, when I was all scaredy, that this thing was gonna have too much compression. In reality, I kind of wish it had a bit more, but we got a block. And this is actually technically a still good head gasket. We may use that for purposes of retesting things, but oh, take gloves off. Yeah, so oh, let's get this right way around. I'll give a quick outro. So, again, um, so at this point in time, we're going to clean off the tops of all those pistons. You know, um, just some memory foam and some cleaners and stuff make those look nice and fresh. The head looks beautiful. I mean that's that's mint. I'm 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 extremely happy with that. And again, I'm super happy with how good the cylinder walls look. Again, this motor, I compression tested it right before I put it away for winter, and it was great across the board, which makes perfect sense. God, I made a giant disaster cool under this car. Well, that's what you live and learn. So, anyways, 
teardown is basically done. Like I said, the last thing I got to do is figure out how to get that dampener off because I got a new one coming, shipping out Monday. Head should be in the next week. Um, and then at that point, so the next step is over there in that other box that says Cometic, I've got a 0.3 Cometic casket. Now, what we have to find out is if you see that cylinder pokes up through the block. I need to measure how much it pokes through the block, and more importantly, does it poke past the head gasket? Because if it pokes past the head gasket, I gotta get a different head gasket, because obviously that ain't gonna work. Um, but the point of that is, again, a stock S52 head gasket is like 0.7. Don't hold me to it. Um, so this should, in theory, raise our compression a bit more. So, but yeah, um, progress. Real good progress because again i'm on a bit of a time crunch with this one um we are going to tentatively be trying to dyno and tune this thing end of march it is currently first weekend in february so i got about a month and a half to put together this top end and also possibly pull the pan so I can increase the pressure in the oil pump, which will be a separate video. Um, but, yeah. So again, I'm really trying to, this is my first true time making what I'm trying to make a video series. So, please, comments, suggestions, what do you want to see? What do you want me to show you? Um, we're going to be doing a lot of things. I got to, again, I got to measure clearance. We're also going to be measuring, once the new head's in, we're going to be measuring clearance so that we can figure out how aggressive we can run the cams. Um, initially, we're not going to be running Venos, um, just because with this aggressive of a cam, you really can't. Or you're going to have detonation. Um, I mean, this is the goal of this, this is going to be a street race motor. For all intents and purposes, this thing is now going to be a full-blown race motor that I am going to street drive. This car still has a full interior. It doesn't have AC anymore at the current moment. I am looking into alternative options for that, but it will be a street car. The bulk of what this car will see is the street. I, I want this. I want to have... I love this engine. I love E36s. I want to show... This thing can make some cool power. This thing's going to sound amazing. It's going to be cool. So, anyways, this is Ed, 1110s Racing. 1110s Racing Facebook. 1110s Racing on Instagram. Hit me up and have a good one.